Got him. Bailey's going to come inside. Got him. Got him. I mean, that is knee high paint, the outside corner. His left foot. Got him. Three pitches. Eat him up. Now, back to Willard and Dibbs on 95.7 The Game. We'll get back to Dubs in a little bit. Steve Kerr, less than an hour away. I, I'll say this. Here's one thing that matters for the Giants. Two and four start, whatever. They're playing the Dodgers. <laughs> but I think this matters. There is an infusion this year of flair. And that... I think is very important and sometimes it's kind of hard to find. Like even though Solaire didn't homer until last night, flair. Jung Hu Lee, flair. Kyle Harrison, flair. I could watch the leg kick when he strikes someone out all night long. That's important. The Giants have been missing that. I agree. And a little hop off the mound, too. Well, that's what I'm talking about. A little, little leg kick, a little hop off the mound. Just confidence. Um, swag. No doubt. Got to have it. Little, little swag. You got to think you're the best player on the field every time you take the field. Uh, if you don't, you're going to be in trouble. Kyle Harrison's dad, Chris, joins us now. Willard, FP, 95-7 the game. Chris, how, how how old was Kyle when he started hopping off the mound like that? Uh, I would say uh, a little bit later in his uh, career. You know, Little League, it's just learning how to pitch, right? Travel ball, you're growing into it. High school. You know, you're starting to really understand you're dominating guys. And then I think once he got into pro ball and, uh, you know, went through the different levels there and now in the big leagues, I think uh, he just kind of brought it all together and uh, has that swagger with him. Um, he's always competed. He's always been a bulldog, but now you're kind of seeing in this finish. And uh, it's funny, I've got a, I got a coach when he's young that doesn't like his finish. He likes his uh, – Foot, left foot to stay, you know, straight in line with the uh, plate. So he kind of gives me crap for that. And uh, I go, I'm not going to mess up a good thing, man. That's that's working for him right now, you know. Um, Chris, what are you expecting this year? You know, now now there's no more. Is he up? Is he down? There's none of that junk. Kyle, Kyle's here. He's in the rotation. So so what what do you what do you and he think this this year is going to look like? What are the goals? The goals are just to improve every day, right? Just every pitch, every outing, uh, help the team win, uh, be a better version of himself, get himself better every day to be the best he can in the game. I mean, really, he's got the highest ambitions, guys. Um, you know, he wants to win Rookie of the Year this year. He knows he's got a task in front of him with an older, you know, Yamamoto and Lee on his team as well, right, at his footsteps, hitting well. Um, but he believes he's got the stuff and the ability to be the best. Um, as far as a rookie. So he's going to go out there, shove, do his best, and compete and uh, try to win for the Giants every time he's out there. I love it. I love having lofty goals as a player. I mean, that's really good stuff, and believe it in yourself is even better stuff. Chris, what kind of parent are you when you watch Kyle pitch at the highest level? Are you, are you, are you a pacer? Are you nervous? And is it ramped up by maybe facing the greatest, I don't know, one, two, three hitters ever assembled in the history of the game tonight? Right. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I've got a bunch of buddies going downtown Danville tonight watching the game. And uh, I actually just prefer to watch it at home. You know, I, I, I really enjoy baseball and watching the plays and watching him pitch in a sequence and how the hitter's reacting. And it's hard to do that when I'm with a bunch of friends and a public setting so i, I kind of enjoy joy just watching out of my you know privacy of my home and just watching them compete and watching the team go about winning the game um so that that's kind of where i'm at I, I get nervous for him of course but i know he's going to go out there and do his best and perform at the highest level and um baseball's a crazy game guys as you know you just never know how it's going to go so um i, I just you know that's kind of my take there the, the, the fact, uh, yeah. excuse me, Mark, the fact that he sat around for a couple of games watching this lineup, do you feel like, based on his baseball acumen, that he's got a pretty good idea what he wants to do to this Dodgers lineup tonight? I think so, but you guys know it's all cat and mouse, right? Like, you know, I talked to him a lot about it, and, you know, Blake Snell's talking to him last night, and, you know, Webb the day before, and, you know, just bouncing things off, you know, Brian Price and Bomel and, you know, all the different coaching staff there, and you have a plan, but a lot of times – that plan adjusts when you're up on the mound and you're seeing how the hitters react to your pitches. And I, I talked to him a lot about that. He learns as he actually pitches within the game. 
it's quite interesting. It's not just, okay, I've I got a basic game plan, how I'm going to pitch Mookie, you know, right off the bat, how I'm going to come in Freeman or Otani and then Freeman, but it's like, it's kind of like I have that plan, but I want to see how their hands, how, how their bat, speed, what they're looking at, what they're trying to look for, and just adjusting every pitch. Chris Harrison, Kyle's dad, out in Danville, with us here on 95.7 The Game, FP in for dibs on on Willard and Dibs. Yeah, Kyle Harrison versus Shohei Otani tonight. Your thoughts, Chris? Yeah, I mean, uh, let's go, right? You know, you've got a, a young rookie um, with, with great stuff and a lot of confidence. Um, Going to try to go after one of the best two baseball players in the world, right? Otani and, and uh, Betts before him. So uh, you're just uh, excited to see him go out and attack him and uh, give it his best. And uh, may, may the best man win. And, you know, every... Every at bat's different, right? Um, you know, you see sometimes, uh, you know, Kyle might win the first one, they might win the second one, but you just go out there and compete and do your best and leave it all in the field, see what happens. You know, you mentioned him talking to Blake Snell. What, what does the arrival of Blake Snell do for Kyle? Oh, wow. I think it's huge. Uh, just from a mentorship, I mean, I can't say enough about how Logan Webb has taken on that mentorship role with Kyle in the whole off season. They train together all off season. Um, and just being able to pick his brain and talk to him as they're working out throughout the year, whether it was at Push or at Papago there, um, learning how to be a big leaguer, learning how to pitch, working on different pitches, working out how to train properly, how to get that mental mindset. So I think having another guy like Blake Snell coming there, that's a lefty. And you guys know lefties kind of think, think similarly, right? They're, they're a little different animal. So, uh, I know, like, uh, I believe they're on the plane ride together now. Their lockers are together. So I think it's just going to be a great way to learn from a Cy Young winner, multi-Cy Young winner, American National League, on how he goes about his business, how he prepares for the day, what does his routine look like, um, how does he face certain hitters, and, and that whole approach that I, I just think will be extremely valuable. So it's not just Blake Snell, but I think it's the whole staff, even Jordan Hicks. You know, he's had some years in the league. Um you know, and, and others, you know, when Robbie Ray comes and Alex Cobb comes back, I mean, look at the mentors that this young rookie has now um, to really um, grow in his career and his craft. I, I think he's super fortunate. Yeah, it sounds like he's smart enough to realize that that's so valuable to have those guys around. Mark asked that last question, or two questions to go wrong to you. It, it's it's Otani's facing Kyle tonight, not Kyle's facing Otani. And I guarantee you, based on what you said about your son, <laughs> that that's the way he's looking at it. He's not phased by the stage at all, is he? No. It's crazy, man. Like, I don't know how he does it, but he's not afraid of any hitter. I asked him, like, is there any hitter you're afraid of? Nope. I just go and attack him. I know my stuff's good. I'm confident. I have a game plan. I know what I want to do. And um, it's just baseball, Dad. I've been doing it forever, <laughs> and I enjoy it. And let's go. You know, it's like, wow, okay. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to say fast and Otani tonight. <laughs> I think I think he should throw something up and into all these guys and just kind of look crazy coming off the mound, getting the ball back from Patrick Bailey. Just right, I mean, like these guys maybe, are too maybe, these guys are too comfortable. The first on bats, right? Yeah, tonight, let, just, just, just up and in, right? Scare him a little bit, <laughs> then just have like a little crazy left-handed look in your eye when you go down to get the ball. These guys are way too comfortable in the batter's box right now. I'm, I'm a little old school. I'm not saying hit anybody, but just yeah, the 22 year old kid, a little bit wild and crazy. And here's well, one 95 yeah. around you, a little close shave. I don't know. Just a thought. Well, I, I agree. I mean, I, it's not going to be intentional, um, but, you know, that arm is lively, guy. It's a, it's a new Ferrari, right? So it's like a lot of times you just have to establish that um, that fastball that runs up on the top rail, that heater. And, uh, you know, before he establishes it in the game, sometimes it could, you know, on a lefty, it'll it'll run right in on him. And um, that's not a bad thing. He did it to Soto last year, and it's nice to back Soto off the plate, right, and get a little – let him let him feel a little uncomfortable. I mean, I, I tell you what, a lot of hitters I've heard – they don't like – it's not a comfortable at-bat. Kyle doesn't give you a comfortable at-bat. So tonight's going to be quite interesting, um, and I'm excited for him. And I'm excited for everyone to see, you know, who he is and what he can do. Chris, I know he only got about a month of this last year, but but what does Kyle say about the difference between Gabe Kapler's clubhouse and, and Bob Melvin's? Uh, old school. Let's just put it that way. I think, you know, Bob is just your prototypical old school baseball coach, knows the game inside and out, uses analytics, but has a nice blend of feel 
And I think you can add that with, you know, Brian Price as pitching coach, uh, Garvin Alston as other pitching coach of the bullpen, who was with him in AAA Sacramento. And then you got Matt Williams and all these other veterans around, right, um, that are just there, um, that understand, that played the game at a very high level, played in the Giants organization. And just from the workouts alone, from what I heard, you know, during um, spring training and PFPs, I mean, they were working on, like, dogs out there. I mean, literally, I mean, so much I think even Lee got – Heard he wasn't used to the workouts, you know, um, coming into the spring training and thought it was quite a long, you know, spring training, right? So, I mean, I just think it's a whole different vibe. It's, uh, he, you know, I think he looked at everyone individually, saw what they brought to the table, did his own analysis and assessment, and then worked them out the way he wanted to work them out and what typically works for winning ball clubs. And now you've got a roster that is much improved from last year and a coaching staff that is just fantastic and set up to to um, get these guys developed and get them better and get them winning. How do you handle the ticket situation being a hometown kid playing the, for the hometown team? <laughs> I mean, that could always get weird, right? Because the, the sixth grade science teacher wants a ticket. Everybody wants a ticket. He grew up here, local kid, playing for the Giants. How do you guys handle that as a family? That's difficult, but I, I got to the point most of my friends are good. They're just getting their tickets on their own. I'm like, guys, I don't even want to deal with trying to get my tickets, so you guys just come to the game. You can ride in with me if you want. I'll meet you there. Um, but yeah, I, I leave it up to them to get their tickets. Uh, and then we all just link up at the game and watch them go, you know? Uh, is he pitching? He's pitching in the Washington series, right? Are you coming? Yeah, I'm going to, I'll be there Tuesday. Um, it's Tuesday I'm on Monday, but I think he's got the Tuesday game. Okay. Okay. Right after uh, Blake Snell, Blake Snell, Kyle Harrison, back to back Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, exciting, guys. Um, just excited for the season. I hope all the Giants fans are excited about the management, the leadership, as well as the players. Um, just a just a way different team and feel than last year, and uh, I think we're all just very excited for the season. Does he already have, and I, I'm gathering you're going to say yes, but, but to what level does he already have that sort of like, uh, they've lost three in a row, give me the ball kind of a mentality? Yeah, I mean he wants to win guys. He's so competitive. Um, that's all he's, I mean, he's won his whole life. I'm telling you, he's just been on the teams that he's had and, uh, through, through, you know, travel ball, he was on the best teams and we always won at the highest level and high school. We won it all in California, uh, Northern California, uh, would have won all of California if we had a state championship, but he's just that guy that wants to win. So, he's ready for tonight. I mean, this is a brutal lineup, right? The Dodgers lineup, one of the best in the world. Um, but you know what? Like I said, at the front of the call, man, just go in there, compete. Um, you've got great stuff. You know how to compete and win and uh, lay it all out there and help the team win and do your best. That's all you can do. All right, Chris. Um, I don't want you to protect him here because uh, we're all parents and we know how it goes. When he was little, what, what, what drove you nuts about Kyle? <laughs> oh, gosh. What drove me nuts? Uh I don't know, maybe uh, how he treated his younger brother. He was tough on him, <laughs> you know, so I'd have to get on him because he was three and a half years older and, uh, you know, both are athletes. My youngest is at St. Mary's playing baseball there as a catcher, a freshman catcher, doing real well. He's uh, ex really excelling in baseball, having a good time, but he was so hard on him. I said, you better be, you know, better be careful, man. He's going to take it out on you when he gets older and be bigger and stronger, and he, he's about the same size as Kyle. He's 6'3", 215, and probably wound up being bigger than Kyle, and hopefully hopefully in the big leagues, you know, at some point. So um, that was kind of the thing. I was, yeah, they, they, they'd play together and be the best of friends, but uh, he'd be hard on them, and they, they'd fight as well. So was, that, that would always piss me off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brotherly uh, love, right? Like, was he a picky eater or anything like that? Uh, both are big eaters. No, they eat everything. So they're, they love to eat. Big boys love to eat. Um, not picky. Um, but I, I would just say more of that attitude, like that you guys talk about. My youngest is more of an old soul. Um, Kyle's got that chip where, you know, getting a competitive setting, he hates to lose. And, uh, sometimes, you know, his brother would be getting the best of him and he didn't like that. Right. So then he, do cheap shots to him. You know how the older brother is smarter, they're older. He'd give him cheap shots, and that would piss me off because, you know, the youngest just didn't know enough, was, you know, was younger and couldn't, couldn't defend himself as much. So, But, you know, you look back now and you go, that's what makes Kyle super good, though, right? That, it's like, all right, you go face the Dodgers tonight, man, because you've, 
you know, you, you've got that bulldog tough mentality and you've given it to people and I gave it back to you. And now, you know, you go out there and go get it. So yeah. anyway, uh, it's now kind of I, interesting how you see some of that, you know, in, in the, in the boys. You yeah, know? you do. No doubt. Uh, so now I do want one in on the hands of Mookie Betts right off the start of the game. Yeah. No, I read well, that I just just I, for I the hell of it. Last, last time he faced the Dodgers at home, it was the send off for Crawford, and the joke was uh, he no hit the Dodgers, which he did, but he hit three of them. And I know FP saw that as well. Um, he was sick. He was sick out of his mind. He had this flu for a couple of weeks. He couldn't shake, and he hit a few of the Dodgers. And um, that's not always a bad thing, man. Set the tone, and you go at him, and he ended up no hitting him through six, I believe. It's effectively wild. Let's go, baby. I, I, I'm, I'm not against it. I'm not against it. I'm not it. against it either. Plunking tonight. I, just, I yeah. want. I want crazy Kyle Harrison tonight. Yeah, I yeah. do. Yeah. In a good um, way. I, I promise you guys, he'll play his game. He'll give it his best, and um, we're gonna do our best to win tonight. So. Let's well, go. Well, good luck, man. Let's yeah. go, Chris. Enjoy the game, man. Thank you for hopping on with us. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Anytime. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. There it is. That's Chris Harrison, Kyle's dad. Good eater, picked on his brother. He's going to throw at Shohei tonight. That's what I got out of that.